greatest examples of practicing the mantra, leave it better than you found it, is Yellowstone National Park. The habitat here is truly unique, and along with being a special place, it has a long history of controversial decisions that have affected the plants and animals that call it home. In order to help these animals and us to coexist with them and to be able to protect them, we need information. And a radio collar, a GPS collar, provides really important data that feeds into that goal, right? Dan and his team apply tracking collars to a select few cougars in the park to track habits and learn how these carnivores and humans can coexist in this ecosystem. Let me log in and then we'll try to pull up some data that we can look at on the screen. Uh, here's an example of one of our cougars here. And so what you can see here is the clustered points. See that? Mm -hmm. That's her being on a kill. So as I move through time, so she left the kill recently. That's her leaving the kill. But if I go backwards, you watch her points. She clustered there for several days. The support of you guys, to be honest, feeds into our ability to be able to um, support our collaring program. We have to pay data fees to have that data pull off. Mm -hmm. It helps us support our staff to go utilize the data, to go search the clusters, find their kills. Yellowstone of today, 2022, it's one of our most rich and abundant carnivore populations we have in the United States. And it's a real testament to the success of conservation efforts. We got prong, a couple pronghorn up ahead here, which is kind of significant because where we're going uh, to visit a kill is a, is a killed pronghorn. Dan and I are headed to a cougar kill site, which is admittedly a strange feeling, knowing we're in the territory where large carnivores hunt helpless animals. But he assures me that there have never been conflicts of humans and cougars in the park. If anyone hikes through the Black Canyon of the Yellowstone or any of these other areas in the Northern Range, they've probably been watched by a cougar. Uh, <laughs> they just haven't known it. <laughs> All right. I think it's on the other side of this little creek here. So, well, yeah, if you want to walk up through that gap and then take a left, usually they would bring it behind an area and kind of hide it. So what I'm looking for are some bone remains. Yeah, okay, here we go. Here we go. It's covered oh, up wow. by snow. <laughs> so this is the main kill site. So here we go. Here's... <laughs> what? The hoof, here's the mandible. My guess is that cougar was hunting this creek, taking advantage of cover, maybe got up to the edge and saw some pronghorn, came up and, and, and stalked it, killed it, and then dragged it down through here and, and kept it here right by this creek under cover. <laughs> so wild. Our mission, our mission as a business, we have a motto, it's leave okay. it better than you found it. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because we have people tell us like, oh, that's what my grandfather used to say to me, or that's yeah. what someone yeah. else used to say to me. I view professionally what Yellowstone done is leaving it better than it has been. And I would say the Yellowstone of today is a much healthier, intact, natural system than it was at any other time in the last 150 years. And that's the story of cougars, of wolves, of bears, of bison. Let's bring these animals back. And this system now is operating the way it was, more like the way it was, for thousands of years. It's like the quintessential example of, yes. of what you can do uh, to, to really let a place flourish. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's phenomenal what you guys have done here. Yeah. Thank you. With the efforts of research, science, park staff, funding, and education, we've been able to change this ecosystem in a positive way, specifically through the efforts of the Yellowstone Cougar and Wolf Project, which Parks Project is happy to support.